first guest tonight is a beloved actress known for her roles in Alien, Ghostbusters, and Avatar. Please welcome Sigourney Weaver. Yes. You are just as lovely as ever. Well, thank you. Um, thank you so much. And it's particularly nice to have you uh, on the show because people may not know this, but your dad eventually, I mean, he essentially in invented these shows. He was the head of NBC, NBC, and he's the one who put Carson on the air. Well, it started with Steve Allen, mm -hmm. uh, and it was The Tonight Show in New York. Mm -hmm. So he was the first person to create a talk show late at night, sort of like a party where anyone could just tune in and be part of it. So. And did you, did you ever go to The Tonight Show when you were a kid? Not when I was a kid. I think the first time I went was, was, when, with, was with Johnny, actually, out in L.A. What was he like? I don't know, really. I think he was probably... <laughs> Hard person to get to know, but I I do know he would have loved you because he he actually had a very silly side, and uh, not not that. <laughs> well, that's good. I'm good with that. Um, I'm totally good. Yeah, I think he just. I'm good would with have... this too. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I think he just would have loved the whole range of of. Uh, what oh, that's awfully nice. It's You're true. my favorite person right now. Well. <laughs> um, it's mutual. Well, we we have not spoken since the election. Yeah. Um, well, I know that you're a uh, you're very uh, you're a very aware person. You care about uh, our politics, even though you're not a political person yourself. What was election night for you? Were you were you shocked by the results? Where were you when you uh, got the results? Well, uh, really, not till I woke up did I get the final results. And I've always wondered what it would be like to wake up in a parallel universe, which is something <laughs> I have acted. Sure, sure. And now I know. Sure. I didn't have an alien in my chest, but it's been worse. <laughs> it's been much worse. Now, uh, as I said, you, you're sort of you're issue oriented. You care about politics, even though you're not political yourself. I understand you you uh, kind of got up in Ronald Reagan's face once at the White House Christmas party. Is this true? That's true. I, well, I, I think that's a very aggressive way of putting it. I, <laughs> I, uh, I was invited. I, I, I'm not you know, saying you crashed the gates. No, I didn't. <laughs> Of the White House. I had to go with a cadet, which he was an oh, honor really? guard. Sort of exciting. That's nice. What and year it, was this? It was this uh, 1984, I think. 1984, so uh, after Ghostbusters? Um, was it? Uh, I think before it came out. Before it came out, okay. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and I, I, you know, I was in the line mm -hmm. uh, to say hello to the president. And mm -hmm. when I got up there, I said, you know, I'm very concerned. Um, about protecting women's reproductive rights and uh, and being pro-choice. And as I finished the sentence, I felt myself being lifted up, <laughs> which is not easy to do, and just moved <laughs> away. Really? Yes. Was it Nancy? Who picked you up? <laughs> Could have been. She's tough. Tough, but fair. Firm but fair, yeah. Nancy, always. Actually, it was a strange night because it was a dinner for the Saudis. And um, I thought, I don't know, I didn't know why I was invited. So I did all this research on, you know, what crops they grow and things like that. So I could be informed. <laughs> what crops and it turns the Saudis out, grow? I know, it's crazy. Like, they do I grow love a your few sand. crops. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason I was invited, I was put next to a Saudi prince who was 11. Actually, it must have been after Ghostbusters came out because he'd seen me in Ghostbusters. He wanted to sit next to Zool, and there I was, and that was why I was invited. <laughs> Seriously. Really? What do you yeah. talk with an 11 year old Saudi prince about, other than crops, obviously? Yes. After we got through crops, yes. you know, he didn't speak English, so we just oh. kind of mooned at each other, kind of, you know. Sort of well, that's, that's a sweet story for him. Yeah. Maybe. Have you kept up with him? Do you know what he does now? Yes, I'm going over there to inspect their crops. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, now, I know a big... Uh, uh, you're in a bit of an environmentalist. You know, obviously, we know this from Avatar. 
you believe in protecting the trees. Right, you right. protect the trees. Yes, uh -huh. yes. Um, uh, the, uh, Trump just, uh, who did Trump, he put in as he head of the EPA? He just appointed Scott Pruitt, who is the um, attorney general for Oklahoma, to run the EPA. Mm -hmm. And Scott Pruitt has made a career as attorney general in Oklahoma suing the EPA on behalf of fossil fuel companies. So, you know, this man who's supposed to be the administrator of the EPA will probably start dismantling it. And you know, we didn't vote for dirty air and dirty water. We didn't say, let's make America dirty again, you know. Mm -hmm. So I think, we're, I think it's, a, it's really a stunning appointment. Well, it's an outrageous appointment. Well, uh, your new movie is called uh, A Monster Calls, yes. and uh, it's about a, a young boy whose mother is uh, sadly dying of cancer, and he, and he imagines or summons a, a tree monster to help and comfort him. Um, something like that? Scare yes. Scare him? Yes. No? Uh, okay. It's not really clear. Uh, in the beginning. Yeah, and, and then Liam Neeson is the voice of, yes. of the tree monster, as, yes. as he should be. As he um, <laughs> and it's a tree monster with a s specific set of skills. And, <laughs> and you play a very sort of hard-nosed uh, grandmother, the, the girl's mother who's dying. And um, you have a difficult relationship with the boy at first. Yeah. And we, we have a clip here of oh, the two okay. of you uh, sharing Not getting along. Yeah. We're not the most natural fit, are we? No, I guess not. I guess not either. But we're going to have to learn. I know. You do know, don't you? Of course you do. But there is one thing we have in common. Your mum. That's what we have in common. Am I going to make it this movie? Am I going to make it? Because that's I, I, what I've seen of it is absolutely beautiful. But I could barely make it through that clip, Sigourney Weaver. I, know. I think you should bring a box of Kleenex with you. Honestly, oh. it's a, it's a really wonderful movie. Um, but and it doesn't. It's not all like that. No, no, no. It's, it's <laughs> there's some very entertaining scenes with the monster. Yeah, no. There's a beautiful fantasy landscape made out in the boy's imagination. Yes. And um, and uh, young Lewis McDougal is magnificent. That's a great English accent you're doing. Oh well, thank yeah. you. I did. Uh, did uh, where did you? Where, where, what's your hook? Well, my mother was English, oh, so I didn't it's know that. one of the accents that I feel is not that far from me. Uh huh. Yeah. But I couldn't sound like my mother in this because my mother went to RADA. Actually, she was there with uh, Vivian Lee. That's the Royal Academy, Academy of Dramatic Art in London. And so she, would, she sounded very posh. She, How does your mother sound? She would go, oh, heavens, we don't need to be entertained and things like that. <laughs> oh, yeah. that's lovely. It was lovely. It was, but I couldn't, I didn't want that for this, Do you know who would thing. love to hear you talk like that? An 11-year-old <laughs> Saudi prince. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Lovely to see you. A Monster Calls opens in select cities December 23rd and nationwide on January 6th. It's Bonnie Weaver, everybody. We'll be right back with Andy Cohen. Stick around.